O G I. Recently, I watched a documentary called Mirage Men, which is about government disinformation campaigns using UFOs as a cover-up for top-secret military projects. The documentary begins with the story of a man named Paul Benowitz. He was a businessman who owned a humidity instrument manufacturing company called Thunder Scientific, which had contracts with NASA and the Air Force. He lived in Albuquerque, New Mexico, across from the Kirkland Air Force Base. In 1979, he began to see kaleidoscopic lights moving in irregular patterns above it. He started to film and take pictures of the lights, amassing 2,600 feet of 8 millimeter film and thousands of photographs. Using electronic surveillance equipment, he recorded electrical magnetism being emitted from above the base. Additionally, he recorded signals using homemade radio receivers with an array of antennas pointed towards Kirtland Air Force Base. Benowitz surmised that he was documenting alien crafts. He was a card-carrying member of the Aerial Phenomena Research Organization and had a keen interest in the widespread reports of mysterious cattle mutilations, which were plaguing New Mexico at the time. One of the weirdest activities attributed to aliens is the bizarre mutilation of animals. Scattered stories of carved-up livestock and strange lights in the sky date back to the 1890s in the U.S., but it wasn't until the early 1970s that a pattern began to emerge. Today, nearly 15,000 mutilation reports have been received. He also believed that aliens were abducting people and taking them to their deep underground military bases to implant them with mind control devices. He considered Archuleta Mesa, near the New Mexican town of Dulce, to be the location of their subterranean base. I hear you found a strange object up here. Some people think it's one of our satellites. What is it, a flying saucer? After a 15-month investigation, Benowitz shared his findings with the Air Force and warned them of an alien threat. Documents gathered via Freedom of Information requests show that Benowitz was visited by two Air Force officials. The important one to this story is AFOSI Special Agent Richard Doty. Doty and his colleague inspected Benowitz's recordings, footage, and photographs, and reported that they could not determine for sure what Benowitz had filmed, but that they believed that it did not pose a threat to the base. As for the electromagnetic pulses, they wrote that they informed the Foreign Technology Department, which intended to inspect Benowitz's materials. In the end, it was concluded that the Air Force would not conduct any further investigations. Despite this, a meeting took place on November 10, 1980, between Benowitz, several officers, and scientists from the Air Force base. The Air Force documentation of the meeting reads, Dr. Benowitz presented film and photographs of alleged unidentified aerial objects photographed over Kirtland Air Force Base, New Mexico, during the last 15 months. Dr. Benowitz also related that he had documented proof that he was in contact with the aliens flying the objects. On 17 November 1980, Special Agent Richard C. Doty advised Dr. Benowitz that the AFOSI would not be involved with the investigation of these objects. The report also mentions that two senators contacted the Air Force to ask them if they were investigating Benowitz's findings. It states that Special Agent Richard Doty informed them that they would not. Now what you just heard is the official story, one that Special Agent Richard Doty says is not true. According to Doty, Benowitz was not recording aliens like he thought. Instead, he was recording evidence of classified military projects. Special Agent Richard Doty claims that he was assigned to the position of a disinfo agent. He says that he was ordered to encourage Benowitz to continue to believe that his alien hypothesis was correct in order to conceal the sensitive information leak that Benowitz allegedly stumbled onto. Well, I was, I worked in counterintelligence. I was a counterintelligence officer and my job was to conduct counterintelligence operations. And most of those counterintelligence operations dealt with the protection of highly classified projects that the Air Force or other government agencies were working on. For instance, the Paul Benowitz case, uh, he, he strayed upon a highly classified drone project that was occurring at Kirtland Air Force Base. Headquarters uh, advised me to, to protect those projects at all means. And one of the things that uh, I was supposed to do is convince them that what he was seeing was UFOs and not the classified drones. Well, right. you got to understand that Paul Benowitz was already a believer in UFOs. Right. He was already an investigator from UFO. So when I went to him and I said simply, Paul, don't you think that what you're photographed was UFOs, extraterrestrial? He said, I know they are. Mm -hmm. That's all it took. Doty claims that multiple intelligence agencies were surveilling Benowitz's every move, 
that Benowitz was given a secret $75,000 grant to continue to investigate aliens, that the NSA had set up a spy station in a vacant house right across the street from Benowitz's home. Doty claims that the NSA was beaming low-frequency transmissions that when decoded with a computer, which they supplied to him, would send messages which appeared to be aliens directly communicating with Benowitz. Furthermore, Doty claims that the government devised methods to ensure that Benowitz focused on Archuleta Mesa and not on Kirtland Air Force Base. Since Benowitz believed that Archuleta Mesa in Dulce, New Mexico was the location of the underground alien base, Doty claims that they staged the area to look like one. He says that they placed storage tanks, equipment shacks, and fake air vents to drive the point home. According to Richard Doty, they set up searchlights equipped with rotating lenses to simulate the appearance of UFOs in the sky. In 1981, Doty claims that he took Benowitz on a helicopter ride to survey Archuleta Mesa and pointed out the phony structures the government had planted. Then he says that he encouraged Benowitz to consult the aliens which he had been communicating with to find out more. Afterwards, Doty says that Benowitz started to fixate on Dulce rather than Kirtland Air Force Base. Benowitz, who was also a pilot, would fly his own helicopter over Archuleta Mesa on countless scouting missions throughout the next several years. By 1986, Benowitz's delusions and paranoia nearly destroyed him. When he first started investigating the strange lights in the sky, he was a successful businessman and physicist with a loving family. By the end of his journey in the late 1980s, he was an emaciated, unstable insomniac who had trouble expressing a coherent thought. He kept an arsenal of weapons around his home and installed extra locks as he believed that aliens were coming through his walls at night and injecting him with chemicals. He also suspected that his wife Cindy had been implanted with an alien tracking device. In August 1988, his sons took over his business after he barricaded himself in his home. He was later admitted to a mental health facility after his family checked him in for nervous exhaustion. He stayed there for a little over a month. Luckily, Benowitz eventually recovered his sanity. He remained interested in UFOs, but his relentless search for alien life slowed down considerably. Richard Doty claims that he visited Benowitz near the end of his life and confessed that much of the things he told him was disinformation and that he was ordered to lie to him. According to Doty, Benowitz refused to believe him. I tried to convince Paul that uh, what he what he saw was in fact something military. He wouldn't believe me. He was he was convinced it was UFOs. Paul Benowitz died in Albuquerque, New Mexico on June 23, 2003. He was 75 years old. Paul Benowitz's theories about an underground base in Dulce live on in popular UFO mythology. There was a man named Phil Schneider, who was a former explosives engineer employed by the US government, who claimed that he worked at the base and that in 1979, he was part of a firefight between US military and gray type extraterrestrials. When I first heard this story in the documentary Mirage Men, I found it really compelling. Logically, it makes sense. A UFO enthusiast with access to powerful equipment, since he owned a company that had contracts with NASA and the Air Force, starts to record evidence of top-secret government projects from an Air Force base directly across from his house. Multiple government agencies collude to conceal their classified projects from going public, so they decide to encourage and even to trick him into continuing his wild alien goose chase. In the end, their efforts to mislead him drive him mad. It's a great story, but is it true? Much of this tale comes from two men, Richard Doty and Bill Moore. Now the problem with trusting anything that Richard Doty says is that he's a fucking liar. Richard Doty's status as an alleged disinformation agent has afforded him a career as a whistleblower in the UFO community. He has appeared in countless documentaries, radio interviews, books, and at conventions, all of which have no doubt been very profitable for him. Here's an example of some of the wacky stuff that Richard Doty says. Did, did the CIA or one of the agencies lose an extraterrestrial biological entity? Well, yes, they did. There was an extraterrestrial biological entity that escaped from the holding area out of Area 51. And, and what, what happened? Did, 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 we, did we get the EBE back? Yeah, yes, we did. Well, we got the body back. We recovered the body, but... Uh, it was in a holding area. Uh, it escaped. I don't know how it escaped. Uh, and, they, and the creature made it all the way up north towards Warm Springs, Nevada. Were you involved or were you at Groom Lake at this time? I was. The only thing I did was I um, notified some people and I maintained contact with local authorities. 
I just got to know, how do you call the county sheriff there and speak to him about an escaped alien? No, it wasn't an We didn't use the word alien. Right, 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 we, right. How do you have yeah. that conversation? Well, we, we called and advised them that we're looking, we're searching for a, 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 a highly dangerous uh, military person who escaped from confinement. As you can see, he's not very credible. However, it is well documented that he was a special agent in the AFOSI between 1980 to 1988, and it's true that he was tasked with handling Paul Benowitz's case. Air Force reports show that he visited Benowitz's house to inspect his research materials, and that he spoke to two senators when they called to ask about the status of Benowitz's investigation and if the Air Force was pursuing it, to which he said no. In 1989, Bill Moore, a writer of conspiracy novels such as The Roswell Incident and The Philadelphia Experiment, spoke at a mutual UFO network conference. There he shocked the crowd when he announced that he engaged in a disinformation campaign against Paul Benowitz on behalf of the Air Force Office of Special Investigations and that he had done so in cooperation with Special Agent Richard Doty. It became apparent to me that my supplying information to the government through Doty on the activities of Paul Benowitz, APRO, and to a lesser extent, several other individuals, was to be a part of this equation. I also discovered that whatever it was that Benowitz was involved with, he was the subject of considerable interest on the part of not one, but several government agencies, and that they were actively trying to defuse him by pumping as much mis disinformation through him as he could possibly absorb. His book, The Roswell Incident, popularized the belief that there was an alien crash in Roswell, New Mexico in 1947. People hardly spoke about this theory before Bill Moore published his book in 1980. Additionally, his book, The Philadelphia Experiment, was a smash hit. So why would Bill Moore want to intentionally tarnish his name? If Richard Doty is lying about being a disinformation agent in order to enjoy a lucrative career as a whistleblower, then why would Bill Moore tank his reputation in order to aid in Doty's deception? Before we get to that, what exactly is Bill Moore's story? And how did he engage in a disinformation campaign against Paul Benowitz? Bill Moore says that he was first approached by a high-level intelligence official called Falcon, who connected him with Doty. Doty claims that Falcon was with the Defense Intelligence Agency. However, it's never been confirmed that Falcon exists. Bill Moore claims that Richard Doty offered to give him classified UFO information on the condition that he spy on fellow ufologists and feed them disinformation. He said that he eventually accepted Doty's offer and that his first target was Paul Benowitz. He claims that he was instructed to befriend Paul Benowitz and to present to him a phony top secret Air Force document called Project Aquarius. This bogus document allegedly contained detailed photo analysis of Benowitz's UFO research material. Now remember how I said that the Air Force told Benowitz and two senators that they were not looking into his investigation? Well, according to Moore, once Benowitz saw the Project Aquarius documents, he took it as proof that the Air Force was actually taking his investigation very seriously. In the book Project Beta, Moore is quoted saying, My understanding was that Benowitz was expected to wave it to the press and others as proof of what he was saying about an alien invasion, at which point the document would be denounced as counterfeit and Benowitz would be further discredited. According to Doty, he was ordered to pass along the document to make Benowitz believe that the Air Force was taking his alien investigation seriously, when in reality they were not. Doty says there were many similar government disinformation campaigns that were performed against the UFO community at the time. These include hoax documents such as MJ-12, Project Serpo, and the Carter briefings. For example, disinfo documents were allegedly shown to cattle mutilations filmmaker Linda Moulton Howe, who says that Richard Doty invited her to Kirtland Air Force Base and showed her classified documents proving that the U.S. government concealed the truth about several UFO crashes. She also says that he told her that extraterrestrials manipulated DNA in primates to create homo sapiens. Richard Doty says that he was ordered to show her the documents and that they were sent from the Pentagon. If this is true, then why would the government bother doing such a thing? In the case of Paul Benowitz, it makes sense if they tricked him in order to safeguard classified projects. But why bother slipping fake documents to people reporting about things like time travel, alien abductions, and cattle mutilations? So there are many theories about why this might happen. Some believe that the government is attempting to discredit UFO research by disseminating absurd disinformation. Others think that it's part of a psychological experiment 
and molding and manipulating people's beliefs. Another theory revolves around the introduction of the Freedom of Information Act in 1966, when thousands of pages of once classified documents were released to the public. UFO researchers began poring over documents and submitting FOAs because they wanted proof that the government was lying to them about UFOs. Therefore, the idea goes, that the Russians started to monitor the UFO community in case they stumbled onto any information on secret military hardware or black budget projects. It's theorized that the US government decided to leak silly things like Jesus Christ being an alien in order to muddy the waters and to throw the Russians off. Now these are all interesting theories but there's no proof to support any of them. Let's get back to Bill Moore, the man who ruined his career to confess that he was working with the government as an informant and spreader of disinformation. In May 1987, Moore was part of a group of ufologists who circulated supposedly leaked documents called Operation Majestic 12, aka MJ-12. The documents claimed that President Truman created a secret committee to conceal the crash of an alien craft at Roswell, New Mexico in order to reverse engineer it and that this committee was controlling UFO information, how it was released to the public, and how the government should deal with it. MJ-12 was later proven to be a fabrication. Bill Moore claimed that he found a declassified memo in the National Archives written by President Eisenhower's assistant, Robert Cutler, which mentioned MJ-12. After releasing the MJ-12 document and the supposed memo, the UFO community started to accuse Bill Moore of fabricating a hoax. This was prior to his confession that he was a disinformation agent. In 1982, nearly three years before Bill Moore claimed that he and his team were given the MJ-12 document, he spoke to a writer for the National Enquirer named Bob Pratt about collaborating on a non-fiction book together about MJ-12. Bob Pratt said that he insisted on making it a fictional novel instead of non-fiction, as he could not confirm much of the information Moore shared with him. In 1983, Bill Moore allegedly spoke to a UFO researcher named Brad Sparks about the idea of creating fraudulent government documents containing insider information he learned from Doty in order to entice former military personnel to speak out about UFOs and to ignore their oath to secrecy. Sparks said that he advised Moore against it. Look, the legend of Paul Benowitz makes for a great story. One that actually makes a lot of logical sense. But its veracity is marred by a lack of evidence and because it hinges on the testimony of two serial fabulists, Richard Doty and Bill Moore. In the book Project Beta, Doty and Moore both say that they saw magical colorful orbs about the size of softballs hovering near the ceiling in Benowitz's home. So unless you believe in magical colorful orbs, then it's safe to say that these two are prone to embellishment at the very least. There were things happening in Paul's life mm. uh, that we then we later determined wasn't coming from us or wasn't coming from um, from U.S. intelligence. We didn't know where it was coming from, such as the orb incident that happened in his house where there or, or an orb was flying around his house. Until hard evidence is presented and more credible witnesses come forward, I don't know if we'll ever know the truth about what really happened to Paul Benowitz. One of the things, one one of the things that um, yeah. is is quite uh, disgusting is there's not much out there that's actual factual. Uh, the UFO community disinforms themselves. They provide uh, people go out there and write books, and uh, without any facts, <clears throat> uh, ninety percent of everybody that writes these books, these authors, had never been in the military, never been worked for the intelligence community, never had a security clearance. And they're just relying on second, third, and fourth hand information to write a book and then po basically poison the, the, the readers and the rest of the UFO community. If you like my videos, please support me on Patreon. I've been working on a huge video. Let's just say it's panning out to be the most ambitious and expensive video I've ever produced. Anyway, until then, as always, stay tuned for more weird stories.